Welcome back. This is this week's project. Now this is a custom set for a client. I had this sitting in my workshop and she took quite a fancy to it. So we're gonna do it up for her. It's two bedside tables and a tall boy. It's a six drawer tall boy. So we're gonna have a lot of drawers to get through, but we'll get there. So let's just get to it and for those of you who haven't been to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who watch all my things, welcome back. Glad to have you here. So let's get started. We're gonna start by taking off all the hardware from these tall boys and bedside tables. Now, this is the old wooden knobs. I'm not interested in using that anymore. We're going to update it and uh, give this three piece set a nice, fresh new look. These old knobs are pretty easy to take off. All you need is a screwdriver or a cordless drill. Pop it in one side and screw off the other side and Bob's your uncle. Now before we get into any sanding, once we've taken off these handles, we want to give the unit a really good clean. So I'm just using a general cleaner with a degreaser in it so that it can remove all the oils and built up dirt that this unit has gotten over the years. It's quite an old unit, so we want to make sure we get rid of all the dust and grime and oil so that we can sand it up and have something for the primer to actually stick to. Now that we've given the unit a good clean, we're going to grab our orbital sander with 120 grit sandpaper and give the unit a good sand. Now our client wants a raw top on the top of this unit, so we're going to see how hard it is to get back this varnish and see whether I need to go down a grit to try and remove it easily or whether 120 will be sufficient. Now the varnish is actually coming off quite well with this, so we don't need to go down any lower than 120 grit. So I'm just gonna make sure that I update my sandpaper pads regularly so that I get the same even consistent top on this raw wood. Now that I've removed all the varnish, I've grabbed my 180 grit sanding pad and I'm just going to rub it over the surface because we want to get that smooth finish. So once you start with a grit on your orbital sander, you need to go up a grit and then up again 
to give that really smooth finish. So I'm just going over everything with 180 and now I'm putting a 240 grit sanding paper back onto my orbital sander for that final touch. And now that our top is all back to raw, we're gonna work on the side. So I've just got my little handheld detail sander here and I've got 100 grit on this and I'm just going over the edges. Now the edges you'll find on most units, the varnish isn't as thick as it is on the top, obviously because the edges don't need that much varnish and that much top coat to be protected. So they usually come off quite easily. And as you can see here, there's really not a lot of effort involved in getting the varnish off the side here to bring the wood back to raw. Now I spoke to my clients before I did this and suggested we get rid of these hideous legs on this unit. So I've just grabbed out a mallet and I'm just trying to bang them off. Now they have been glued on tight. So we're just trying to get these off so that we can build them a brand new base and modernize the unit. Now that the tops are all done, we've got 120 on our orbital sander and I'm just scuff sanding the side of the unit. Now this is going to be painted. So we don't have to worry too much about getting all the varnish off but we do need to make sure that we address every little piece on the unit so that the paint has something to stick to. You cannot paint over something that hasn't been properly prepped because you're not giving the paint any teeth to stick to. You wanna rough up all the surfaces and make sure there's plenty of adhesion. Always keep in mind when you're sanding to give the unit a really good clean afterwards. You wanna remove all the dust particles from sanding, otherwise your paint's gonna to stick to the dust particles and not to the actual wood itself. So make sure you give it a good clean and wipe off all the dust. Now, before we go on to priming the unit, we need to fill these hardware holes because we're not using the same hardware. We're not using those old wooden drawer handles or knobs I should say. So I've just got out my builder's bog. Now this is the same as Bondo for those of you that are overseas and uh, we don't have Bondo in Australia, but we do have builder's bog which is exactly the same. So you have your base, you add your hardener and you've got a couple of minutes to work with it until it gets too hard. So only use a little bit at a time and just obviously remake up more as you need it. Now I'm just applying the builder's bog with a spatula, just making sure I fill up all the holes 
and then we will check after it's all dry and sanded back again to make sure there's no air bubbles in the builder's bog that I'll need to go over because we want the holes to be completely invisible. While the builder's bog is drying, I'm just going to cover the raw tops on the three of these units. Now it's time for our first coat of primer. I'm using Benzinsa Bullseye 123 water-based primer and I'm just opening it up and I'm gonna strain it out using a filter into my spray gun. I use a Wagner spray gun for those of you who haven't watched uh, any of my videos before. I love my Wagner. So here we're just giving it a good stir to make sure the whole primer is mixed up and ready to go. Then we'll filter it into our spray gun and we'll be ready for our first coat. Here we go with our first coat of primer. Now, because this unit is going a raw top with a white base, we want to make sure it's completely covered. So I like to do two coats of the Benzinsa to make sure that everything is covered and I don't have any bleed through or any problems with adhesion. For those of you who know me and watch my work quite frequently, you'll know that I absolutely hate masking up drawers. I will do it on the rare occasion, but it's not my favorite thing. So I generally just hand paint all the drawers. I use a general synthetic paintbrush, paint on the primer, and then I use a roller with four millimeter nap and I smooth everything out and you get the same finish from the roller as you do with a paint gun. So. Just keep that in mind, if you hate masking up as much as I do, this is always an option. Now we're going in for our second coat of primer to make sure that we have full coverage, because keep in mind we're going to white, so we want to make sure we have everything covered beautifully. Now that we have our two coats of white on our units, it's time to start with our main colour. We're just using a generic white with this. I actually picked this generic white up from Bunnings, which is the same as Lowe's and all the other hardwares that you guys have in America and UK. Bunnings is the Australian version. So this is actually a mist tint that I picked up from Bunnings. Um, it's just a Dulux paint, but it will do the job. It is a hard wearing paint, so I'm happy with that. That's hence the reason why I bought it for a mist tint because it's good value. So we're going to do two, possibly three coats of the Dulux White, just to give it a full coverage and make sure that all the areas are complete. I know I haven't shown it here, but always keep in mind when you are painting, regardless of what you're painting, to give your unit a good light sand in between your coats of paint. Now I like to use a 240 or 400 grit sandpaper just to lightly rub over the unit and it removes any bubbles that you might have in the paint or any bumps or any bits of sand that you have left from sanding the unit back that you've missed when cleaning. It just gets rid of these little bumps and lumps. So always try to give the unit in between coats a light sand with a minimum of 240 to 400 grit sandpaper just to get that beautiful butter feeling.
and now it's time for my favorite part. We need to build a base. We actually need to build three bases, as a matter of fact, because we've got a tall boy and two bedside tables. So we want to make sure they're all matching. So I've removed all the legs from the tall boy and the bedside tables. And now we're working on measuring it all out and making sure that it's fit. So I've got my right angle ruler to make sure all my lines are clean and straight. And then we'll be cutting them on our circular saw to make sure all the cuts are even. Always remember when you're using a saw and you're doing these cuts, use the first cut that you make as a template for the remainder of your cuts and always use the circular saw on the same side of the line that you have drawn. Otherwise you're going to shave off a couple of mil every single time you make a cut. So you want to make sure you use the template and use the saw on the same side of the line that you've drawn each time to reduce your wood being different sizes. That way they're all going to be perfect. So here I'm starting with my pocket holes and I have my little Craig jig. I'm clamping all my wood down. I've got my cordless drill and I'm literally just drilling my pocket holes. It's as simple as that. It's a really simple process to do these bases for the unit. Now I learned how to do my bases from DIY Wife. Uh, her tutorials are fantastic. I will in the near future put up a base tutorial. It will be very similar. It'll just be my way of doing it. Obviously when you watch all your favorite YouTubers, you grab little tricks of the trade pretty much that you will apply to your pieces, but there'll be certain things that you'll change on the way. So this is the way I do it. It is similar, but it is different as well. So keep your eye out for a base tutorial and I'll show you how I do my bases. While I'm building this base, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. I am trying to build this channel, so any interaction that you can have with my videos is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions at all or any comments, please write them below and please click subscribe and hit notifications so that you get alerted every time I put a video up.
Now that the bases are built, it's time to take off that protective film that we placed on the top of the unit because we're going to whitewash the top and the base together with the same whitewash so that it's the same colour. Here's the fun part, painting again. It's time to whitewash. So I've just got a synthetic brush and I've got my white paint that I used on the side of this unit and I've diluted it by 50% with water. So I'm just painting it on with my paintbrush and I'm going to grab a clean cloth and wipe it back. And that will leave some of the white on the unit but brighten it up. So it'll take away the yellowness of the raw wood and add in more of a cooler white base. So I'm just working through the unit, doing it in sections with the diluted paint, just painting it on, wiping it back. The good thing about doing paint washes is you can do this as many times as you want until you reach your desired colour. It is a very diluted paint. If you want it stronger, if you want it more of a white, you can always change the ratios and do 70 to 30. So 70% paint with 30% water. And that will obviously give you a stronger color. Here, I like to do it 50% and 50% so that I can see how the color progresses. That's how I do it. Everyone's different and you will figure out what works best for you. But on these units, I'm whitewashing and I have done two coats of the whitewash to get the desired colour that I'm after. Keep in mind when you're doing a paint wash, always make sure you are wiping the paint back to the grain of the wood. When you are wiping it back and you wipe it against the grain, you're actually gonna leave marks going in the opposite direction, which you don't want. You want it to look natural. So always use your clean cloth and wipe it to the grain of the wood to get that flawless finish. Now I'm doing exactly the same process with this diluted paint wash on the bases to make sure that the bases are now the same color as the top. Now it's time to move these units inside and start working on the hardware. I've got my hole punch jig. This is the best purchase for those of you who have difficulty putting hardware on and don't really like measuring up things all the time. Get yourself a hole punch jig. They are affordable and they will cut your job, the time for your job in half. All you do is measure the handles on the hardware jig, set the measurements to the width, make sure it's in the same spot each time and you just move it to each drawer and that replicates exactly the same holes. It makes life so much easier. Now, do you remember this three piece set that I started with, with the wooden knobs and the orangey brown varnish on top of it? Wait till you see what they look like now. What a transformation. The raw tops look absolutely fabulous with the new bases. It's modernized the unit so much. The client chose the handles and the color, but I think it's really turned out to be a beautiful modern set for her bedroom. I'm really happy with this and she absolutely loves it and that is the main thing. So I just wanna say thank you so much guys for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye.